Now that it's fall, I'm thinking fondly of my adventures during the summer. As far as astrophotography is concerned, it was pretty epic. But it's getting cold now, and it's time to enjoy the hobby a little closer to home. I haven't been to my home dark site for a while, and because I've been going on all these adventures, I was afraid I wouldn't want to go there anymore because it wouldn't measure up. But exactly the opposite has happened. It's been calling out to me lately. My familiar yet bright Portal 6. You would think after being in Portal 2 and 3 areas, I just wouldn't be interested. But I guess that's where that old saying comes from. There's no place like home. And I admit, I've been going after some pretty faint targets lately. I finally added some time to WR-134. I found the Squid Nebula for the first time. And I started a new project, IC-63 the ghost. But tonight I've decided to go after something a little brighter. Back in 2021 I took my first photo of the Pac-Man Nebula, also known as NGC 281. And back then I only had a 61 millimeter refractor and a very small chip Astrocam. And while it did get the job done, when I cropped in to see all those details, let's just say things were a little bit murky. Needless to say, I never revisited that target over again. But things are different nowadays. I have a fast, larger aperture Newtonian, which also doubles the focal length that I had in 2021. And four years later, I have not just one camera, but I have my choice of many. And tonight, I'm selecting the camera that's going to give me the best sampling I could possibly get. My very infamous ASI 294 monochrome. And if I set this camera at my bin 2 at 11 megapixels, my sampling should be around 1.6, which is very sharp. All I gotta do now is pack up the van. Sorry, Taco.
All right, guys, we are back at our home dark site. And if it looks a little different, I've actually been, <laughs> I've actually been uh, parking on the other side of the place. So I don't get the van dirty. I know, right? There's actually concrete around here. It's really nice. <laughs> and um, I've noticed it's p more peaceful over here. I don't have to worry about a lot of the stuff I have to worry about just on the other side. But it's definitely really cold right now. It's supposed to be 40 to the upper 30s tonight. And it's only mid-October. So I'm definitely going to be trying out some heating solutions tonight. And also I got to do microwave, which is really cool. It's the smallest microwave I could find on Amazon. And it's a little Toshiba. And I'm really excited to use it tonight because it's so tiny, it's perfect. The only problem is, is my fridge, as much as I love it, I might have to get a different fridge because I didn't realize how much I'd be using it as an additional table, especially when I use the induction stovetop. Every time I have to get something out of the fridge, I have to take everything off the top and then get what I need out of the fridge and then put everything back on it. So... I'm going to try and get one probably the next few weeks that has a door to it that opens on the side. And uh, speaking of that heating solution, i got a heat dish tonight. I'm just going to run off my batteries, see how that works. I can tell you Taco wasn't happy about it because uh, this is actually his heat dish, but if it works out the way I think it will, I want to buy one specifically for the van. So we will see that. And I also bought more lighting. I got this uh, little retro lamp, which is I think is pretty cool. It's supposed to run for 48 hours on a single charge. And it's always been a little bit um, shadowy in the back of the van. So I'm hoping to get a little bit more ambient lighting there. So I think right now we're going to go and set up for the evening. I'm probably going to be here for about four hours tonight. I have a really big day tomorrow at work. This is actually a work night. But I haven't been out in a really long time. By the looks of it, it is super clear tonight. I mean, without all the forest fire smoke in the air, it's looking pretty clear. All right. I'm going to go set up. And we are collimated. Let me know if you got one of these. One thing's for sure, it's freaking cold outside right now. It's actually cold in the van, but uh, I'm not going to heat it just yet. I'm going to cook some dinner first. And what we have for dinner tonight is a lean cuisine. This is a uh, Swedish meatball and noodles. So we'll see how well this microwave works. I'm kind of excited about it, actually. And these lights back here, these little ambient lighting things, I love them. They work really well. Hopefully they do last for about 48 hours like it says they will. Although, should I worry about stuff exploding in here? <laughs> I don't know, it's not like this is the first microwave I've had in here, but... It's just weird having a microwave in the back of a minivan. Time for a taste test. Let's see. I'm going to grab the spoon for this one. All right. Got to mix up the sauce and everything, right? Okay, here we go. Let's see what this tastes like on this cold autumn night. Woo! 
Man, that is piping hot. I think success. I love this microwave. It's tiny, powerful. It's only 700 watts, and it gets stuff really hot. Mmm. All right, Heat Dish is actually keeping the van toasty warm in here, almost too warm. I had to turn it off a few times because it was getting pretty hot, but I think it's just because that's a thousand watt dish there. Like I said, there's a smaller one on Amazon I think I'm going to get since it's working out so well. And speaking of my target right now, uh, the Pac-Man Nebula is looking pretty darn good. I mean... I haven't really been paying attention to it, but uh, it's looking pretty epic. And bin two was definitely the right call tonight because I'm resolving some pretty faint details and it's looking pretty sharp. So I can't wait to actually get into this in Pix Insight. And I wasn't sure how the diffraction spikes would look on a nebula like this, but I don't even know why I question it. It's very, um, it's got this magical feel to it. So I'm really excited uh, to see what this looks like here after tonight. Okay. This could possibly be the coziest I've ever been doing Astro. Got the nice ambient lighting going on. I'm watching some TV. And I am just really, really relaxed right now. And it's toasty warm in here. I think this is the warmest I've been in the past five years during this time. So I think we're going to be all right in the winter. But, um,. Man, I could just pass out right now. I'm trying not to because I have to get up in the morning, but uh, I could definitely pass out here in the back of the van. All right, I, I can't do that. I got to get up. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just going to pass out, man. Jeez. When I got the van... I had the idea of traveling far, doing deep sky astrophotography from really dark sites, which I have now experienced. What I've learned through all this is it's not how far or how dark you're doing the hobby in. It's about doing what you love wherever you are as much as you can. Check out what time it is, taking my flats and I got all my data for the night. Can't wait to see it, but I'm packing it in and going to bed. <laughs> so I guess this is a good night. And the neat part of the hobby is, just because the night's over, it doesn't mean the fun is over because there's a lot of processing involved in astrophotography. And I'm always surprised with what you can get from home. One thought remains, if I was able to get this with a 150 millimeter aperture, I wonder what it'd look like at 200 millimeters. I guess we'll see. <laughs> 